So when I tuned into the energy of today and what would be really um, beneficial to this group, there's a lot of things actually that they're still starting to come through actually. But the, the one piece I think is um, really focused on, hang on, let me just, here we go. A lot of lack mindsets um, and really kind of taking a look at that from a different perspective, but also how to magnetize your energy, right? And not just for soul ideal clients, but how do you magnetize who you are as a soul to draw into you, again, not just money, but synchronicities and unexpected resources, support, unexpected things that you need that you didn't know you need that just show up for you out of the blue and how to really place your energy, your vibration in a frequency in which you can just be. Like, like how can you magnetize yourself in a way in which you don't have to sit down in a meditation every morning? I mean, every morning is good because it recharges you and gives you momentum, but like how can you hold that level of consistency? Because what I see that what happens with people who buy courses or they, um, they do work is that in that six week period of time, it's like go, 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 go. And you're making lots of money and things are happening. Everything is phenomenal. And then the course ends or the container ends. And then what happens is all of a sudden your manifestations start to trickle away, right? And, you know, we go into a funk and then we start telling stories about why that's happening. And when we deal with manifestation, when we deal with lack, the guys are just reminding me to open the container. So just give me a second here. Sorry about that. <laughs> They're like, where are you doing? What are you talking? We're not even there yet. So <laughs> we always open a, uh, a container whenever we do this work. And so now the container is set and you might feel just a little bit of a bump in energy. Um, so, <laughs> so my apologies for kind of backtracking. Woman's like so done with lack, ready for plenty and more instead. Exactly. So how do we do that? How do we maintain that? Like courses and coaching is phenomenal because we get to pick out the areas in which we are completely unconscious from and really start to step into more of our power. And so what I'm saying is like, we, we have all the tools, we've placed all the tools that you could possibly have on this planet to move your mindset out of lack and into a forward momentum, um, which requires sometimes, you know, a lot of mental energy to be really consciously aware of what your thoughts are thinking, what you're thinking, and how that either deters or benefits you, right? So we have all of those tools. But at the same time, it's kind of like, you are the magnet. Like everybody right now, you're like you are the magnet. You are magnetizing things to you right now in this moment, even if you have a really shitty mindset, right? If you have a better mindset, things come to you faster, right? And that's what the proof of the courses are. The moment you enter into our container, you've already made a choice to receive, right? You've invested whatever amount of money you invested and you're like, yes, I'm done with it. Give me more. And that opens the vibration for you to receive. And then we teach you the tools to keep that momentum flowing, right? And this is with any container, whether it's mine or someone else's. Whenever you sign up to work with someone, you kind of have that energy of I'm done. Let's open to receive and then everything starts flooding in. The, 
problems that we've seen with lack are, are twofold, really. Number one, we try to mentally unravel it, which is helpful. And we have other processes that are helpful. But the one thing that people don't really address is the fact that you are the Lumiere. You are the light. And the light in it and of itself of what rides, resides within you doesn't necessarily have a lack mindset or mentality, right? A lack mindset or mentality comes from conditioning, comes from where it is that you've experienced things and then things that you've decided about that, that you've made kind of your own beliefs. Half of people's lack mindset and beliefs aren't even theirs. There are things that they picked up and aligned with from teachers, gurus, parents, people of influence, um, partners, spouses, um, friends, right? So it's kind of like, you know, we align our mindsets with other people by dampening to some degree our own internal light to be accepted or to be a part of the group in order to fit in. And it's kind of like, you know, we want to fit in with the girls club or the boys club or whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it, but they're all vibrating at an energy of lack, right? They're all vibrating in that energy of complaining. I wish I had this. I wish I had that. I wish, you know, this, that, or the other thing. When in actuality, if you are the mirror, you are the light, then what you're, what you're not doing, the missing piece of the puzzle of evolution, if you will, is activating your own inner light and recognizing that everything else that you're experiencing is a false belief system. Like it cannot exist. Lack cannot exist if you were completely and fully aligned in your own inner being. Because lack is a non-existent thing in, in the world of energy, in the world of flow, in the world of soul, in the world of spirit. It doesn't exist. Lack is a man-made concept. Lack is a man-made concept based on experiences in which you were not vibrating at the level of soul. Does that make sense? That's a big energy drop right there. So I just want to let that sit and just kind of land for a minute. Because in our heads, you know, we have this idea like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know. I'm a soul. I'm an energy form. I'm riding in the body. Well, you can't hold that thought and hold a lack mentality at the same time. The two are not vibrationally compatible. There is nothing when you are fully, completely aligned with soul. There is nothing that you can create, you can't generate, or you can't keep moving forward. It's just a matter of tuning your frequency into that, into that vibration. What happens is all of these lack experiences come up and it sounds like, yeah, well, but, but this happened to me. Or, but that happened to me. Like, so it could be things like, I'm going to relate some of my things. Well, you know, I could really make 10K a month, whatever, right? I'm just throwing out numbers, right? But my experience has been, or, you know, my family never made that much. Or, you know, every time I try, it doesn't work right? What we're doing is we're saying, I could totally fully align with source and want to do that, but, but these are all the experiences that say it can't happen. And so when you're dealing with all of that, right, all of those um, feelings or experiences, then it's really hard to step in and activate your light at the same time. Right, because your light is up here and all of those false belief systems and experiences that you're using as to why you can't be up here is the space in between that keeps you from your goals, right? So if it keeps you from your goals, then it keeps you from magnetizing to you, right? A flow of abundance. Yes, things are going to trickle in. They have to. It's not like you're completely shut off, right? It's just a, an energy. So you'll find that even though 
You might even have some of these lack beliefs. Things still happen. Things still come to you. They have to, right? There's nobody that's completely shut off. And if you take a moment, even right now, list in the comments below some of the things that you've experienced over, I don't know, the last 72 hours that came into your reality as a surprise. Somebody bought you a gift. Um, you got a free ice cream somewhere. I know that you have at least one thing that you can muster up. Tell us what that is below. Because even without a you know brilliant mindset that's moving forward and it's all even these happy thoughts, you are still creating, you are still attracting, you are still bringing things in. So what are some of the things that you've brought in over the 70, over the last 72 hours that you can recognize as receiving? You know, maybe you got a day off from work when um, everybody was asking, but, you know, your boss chose you, right? So for me, for example, um, I have a really good one, actually. I found these. Um, so while you're thinking about I want to see you type them in the comments. This is not a passive live stream, right? If you want to get anything out of, it, out of it, you have to participate. So I went to online. I was looking for the hottest pants of this season, which you can't find anywhere. It's like this Kelly green um, pair of pants, wide legged, right? And it's hot all over TikTok. They're hot. They're hot all over TikTok. And I decided I wanted to go get a pair and I went to free people. And in my size, it's very limited because I'm a little bit bigger on the bottom than I am on the top. So there was one pair of extra large pants left in the cart. And I put them in my cart and I was like shopping, like what else can I get? And by the time I went to check out, they were gone. They basically said like, I'm sorry, this is no longer available. But the website was like really kind of funky and it was slowed and it was delayed. It was almost like everybody was shopping on there. And long story short, I said to myself, you know what? I want these pants. I really want these pants. I just want these pants. So I'm going to wait here. I'm going to do a little shopping and then I'm going to refresh my browser and I'm going to go back to my cart, which I did. And it says... It wouldn't check me out. It wouldn't check me out. So I had to remove the pants, go back to the pant listing, and I go there and it says one pair left. Put it in my cart, go back to the shopping cart, funky shopping cart. It looks like, like everybody was checking out at the same time. And boom, I got the pants. I got the pants, okay? Hello? Last pair of pants on free people, right? So those are kinds of the things like, I, you know, did I sit there and, and, you know, use my mindset tools in order to manifest them? No, you know what I used? I used my light. I used my intention. I used my feeling. I used my desire, right? The tools that you learn are to help you unroll yourself out of the funk, right? Is to help you walk your mindset back off the cliff. Shanna says, I didn't know until yesterday that I would have the day off from work today. Exactly. Exactly. And before you did that, did you sit in meditation for like 30 minutes and write it out in your journal? And I would like the day off, right? You didn't do have to do all of that work, right? Because you were already receiving, you're already in that mode, you're already open and willing to receive a day off from work. So you didn't have to do anything other than be you. Olivia went on a great walk with a new old friend, unexpected, to a new place. Oops, I got cut off there, Olivia. <laughs> Hold on, I'll get back to you. And received money more than what I expected today. Exactly, exactly. And Wilma says, actually, things seem to align and come into flow more easily. Exactly, right? We're not sitting here and writing it out and doing all of this work. You know, we do the tool pieces when you feel that flow is stuck. And it's kind of like, oh, I, I feel a little stuck. Why? Mm -mm. Where's, I want to really activate more of that flow 
What is it that I'm thinking, feeling, believing, taking on, empathically sensing that is kind of giving me some energetic constipation, right? Kind of not flowing as easy, right? And, and then we go into our tools. Well, okay, I, I don't really know what that is. So, you know, I have a couple of tools. Let me take a look. And then basically you find out, you use awareness, right? And you figure out, oh my gosh. Oh, it's no wonder. I just said that thought like, this is bullshit. Everybody else is getting it but me. And that's awareness, right? Then you go, oh, now I see where it is. And once you put your light onto it, what do you notice when you when things come up into your awareness? When you realize where you're blocking yourself, immediately you shine light onto that piece. And that immediately begins to tap on that area, kind of like, um, you know, cracking on a walnut, starting to crack open that area and bring even more and more and more light to it. And as you do that, you know, the walnut opens and inside is the prize, right? The, the walnut that you can eat. And for some of us, that's, you know, a clearing, right? It's like, poof, it's gone, right? And some of us, sometimes for some of us, that might be um, a trauma or a childhood wound or something that is really like a surprise and a prize at the same time. Because once you discover it, that is an opportunity to release it, let it go and let it heal. Everything works to your benefit. Okay. But when you activate the light, the first thing you need to do is recognize that you are light. And to see yourself. So if you're in business and you want clients to see you and you want them to be attracted, magnetically attracted to you, how are they going to do that if you can't see yourself? Okay. So here's what we're going to do. And we're going to activate, today is, an, is a light activation. It's activating your own light. It's to be able to see yourself as you truly are in your magnificence of being. And to turn on your light so that the people that you want to be working with, the people that you want to attract into your sphere of awareness can actually see you. Because right now, it's like you and them are in the exact same room, but no one can see each other. And you're screaming in the room saying, I have this program. It is fabulous. And they're screaming back going, I love it. Please, I want to sign up. Where are you? And it's kind of like instead of playing the game Marco Polo in the dark, right? Today we're going to activate your light so that your clients can see you, so that you can receive. Now, before we go into that, um, the guides are just, you know, reminding me here. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. That the idea of lack consciousness, the, the idea of lack in and of itself is a light dimmer. Right? You can only align one of two ways. You can align with your fear or you can align with your light. If you're aligning with lack, you're aligning with your fear, which dims your light. If you align with your light and not with fear, then your light is high, it's bright, people see you. So lack is one of those things where, first of all, it is a spiritual growth point for a lot of evolution here on the planet. So I, I talked about this before, but when you come to earth, there are um, several vibrations that we try to transcend from when we first awake, awaken. And those are, Victim consciousness, lack, poverty, 
disconnection, separation. Uh, and there's one more that I can't think of off my head, okay? But those are, those are the ones that we wake up. Those are the ones that we experience. Those are the ones that we are programmed, for a lack of a better word, to think is the norm. This is just kind of how it is. When you awaken and you realize, oh, I am the light, the light lives within me, and you realize that you have power to create your reality, then you have to move out of that consciousness and into a completely different energy and completely different vibration, right? And that is the vibration of your light. We call that the enlightened consciousness grids, right? is to align your mindset with the light. Now, that doesn't mean you spiritually bypass everything else that comes up for you. <laughs> Let's just be very, very clear about that, okay? Um, no, right? Because our experiences is what really uh, helps us grow and helps us evolve. And we can still be the light. Listen to me very clearly. We can still be the light in the face of our trauma. In the face of our experiences, wanted and unwanted. Are we following right now? What is starting to hit for you at this moment? The problem Nothing, nothing is hitting with anybody. Okay. <laughs> the problem with lack is that lack is unconscious. You don't really realize you do it. So here's a, here's a great example. When you go, and I had this example the other day. I was like flying high, you know, feeling really good, totally aligned, you know. And uh, I went to the supermarket and I think I told this in, in the other training, actually. And there was a woman in the same aisle as me, and she was all upset and bent out of shape because the pricing of food has gone up. Yes, it has. But she made that story about the pricing of food going up as something happening to her. Oh, my God. The price of food. Like, how can people afford it? We have to change the way that we eat. We have to buy things that we wouldn't ordinarily buy. And that is a perception, right? You can, you can change things up a bit, right? Everybody is changing things up a bit, but that doesn't mean that it's happening to you, right? But the processing of it, the fact that it was so intense on her energy and upset her was a brief, frequency of amnesia that says girlfriend you are the light you are the light are you going to let 50 extra cents on your cereal today turn off your light decrease your magic and disempower you is that influence so extreme that you're willing to sacrifice your light over it. This is areas in where we give away our power without even knowing to stupid little things, right? So you pay an extra 50, 50 cents or you don't buy the product and you buy another one. Okay. Olivia says uh, she's learned that I can be both light and dark and still be your light. You can, you can have things happen to you. We've all had things happen to us, but that is not who we are. And when I say that, that that's not who we are, I mean like that's not who we are as light beings, as soul beings, that is not who we are. It is what has happened to us as we are in this form. It is experience. It is not identity. And a lot of time we allow things like lack and experience to steal our identity, to turn off our magic, 
to take away our power and to snuff out our light. Shanna says, I can be in my light with, with stuff happening around and within me. Yes. Yes. That is the whole key. That is the whole key. Because when you align with your light, there's two things that happen. Even if there's shit happening to you or around you, right? When you are aligning with your light, there's always solutions coming in. There's always resources. There's always things that are aligning in your favor. You're always in receiving mode. Crying in your shower because the energy is so intense. You're purging so much that you can't take it anymore. You're completely overwhelmed. So you go in your shower. I don't know if you've ever done this. I've done this a couple of times. You go in your shower, you sit on the floor and you just bawl your freaking face out. You've got snot coming out of every orifice of your entire facial orifices. <laughs> like you're dripping drool. There's snot coming out of your nose. You're crying. You got water all over the place, right? Once somebody would say, well, don't do that. You're going to ruin your frequency. You're going to ruin your energy. You're going to stop the momentum of your receiving. No, you are not crying to that degree allows all of that dense energy that is not aligned with your energy to leave, to move out of your fields. It then helps the body raise its, its own frequency so it can align at a higher frequency with you. It is a process. Now, if you're in the shower crying every night for a month, that's a problem right? That's a bigger problem. But not allowing yourself to feel, not allowing yourself to heal, and becoming a victim of circumstance and even perceptions dims your light. And with your light being dimmed, again, nobody can see you. Olivia says, yes, all the time my shower is my healing room. Yes. It's the only place where sometimes you can actually be in that energy and be able to express and emote it. Am I right? Okay. So how does this affect magnetics? How does this affect your magnetic attraction? The problem with this whole conversation is that when we take our experiences and we allow them to move in, they do become or can take over your identity. And it gives you excuses as to why you can't complete things, why you can't do things, why you can't strive for more, why you're not getting your desires met. I can't attract clients because blah, 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 blah. I can't make money because of blah, blah, blah. I'll never get that job because of blah, 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 blah. All of these things, and I've said this before, are stories that you create in your head based on experience, right? Your mind is saying, this is not going to work because we've tried this before. And they have very believable stories. Very believable. And instead of going, yeah, you're right. You're right. We're inviting you to align with your light and say instead, that's bullshit. I am the light. I have the power. That happened 20 years ago. It's not going to happen again. Why? Because you are not the same person you were 20 years ago. You were carrying stories with you from 20 years ago into the now. And you're still living from them. Olivia, yes, I am the light. You are the light. Lumiers. That's why we called this group Lumiers. Lights. You are the light. But what we do is we get stuck in the stories of lack 
and the reasons as to why we can't accomplish things like other people can, which then leads to jealousy, comparison, low self-esteem, not good enough, lack of worth, the whole nine yards, right? And especially if you're trying to run a business or you're on social media and you're trying to attract clients, well, how can you attract someone? Like, how do you attract moths to a flame? This is an interesting one. This just came in right? Moths are attracted to the flame because it is light. They are attracted to the light. When there is no light, when there's no candle, there's no flame, there are no moths. If you're not enlightening or lightening yourself, turning on your switch, shining your light, there are no moths. There are no clients. I want to learn from a person who is expressing and lighting their light, it's shining it. They're being seen. So thank you. So the guys are telling me, a lot of you are not necessarily um, business owners. So imagine this, you go to an appointment or you meet a person, their the supermarket is like really big today. You meet somebody in the supermarket and you have a brief interaction a brief conversation and immediately you're like, that was such a great conversation. I want that person to be my friend. I wish I had a person like that in my life all the time. It just felt so good. It just like really inspired me. I'm excited. My energy is up. You've ever had that type of experience? You ever met a person like that where you've only had like a brief interaction with them, but you immediately know you want to be their friend? How many hands? Yes? Have you ever had that experience? Or you connect with someone and you know immediately, oh, that person is like amazing. I wonder how they do that. Or they're just somebody that you totally connect with. Even though you've had like two sentences between the two of you. So he's like, yes, I have. There's no secret magic sauce to that. They are just, yes, Olivia says, they are shining their light. They're being their light. They're in their light. And we are the moths. We are attracted to their light. It is the same in life or business. When you are ignited, when you are lit, you are an attraction magnet. When you are out in the world, in your light, you are still an attraction magnet. You find that things just suddenly appear for you or you suddenly appear for someone else because your energy is so light that your interaction with another person is the same one that you've had. You become the influence, you become the hired beam. And it's all because you're activating and recognizing your light over your experiences, over your mind, over your stories. Okay. Any thoughts, feedback, or questions on that? And then we're just going to move into an exercise, a little, an, a light activation, if you will, so that you can, that we're really going to be able to cement this concept in, like to give you like a real sense of, oh my gosh, I totally get it. Okay. So I'm just waiting to see if anybody has any questions. Okay, if not, I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes. And we're just gonna do this kind of light activation. Guided visualization, but there's a activation that goes with it. And just take a couple deep breaths in, centering in on your divine line. Dropping your grounding cords. Get really settled in on your line, on your grounding platform. 
inviting you and your body to ground into your own grounding platforms, to call back all of your energy from every time, space, continuum, dimension, reality, back to your divine line in a whole and healed state, making sure that you're completely and totally present in this breath of now, that you're not being influenced by any time, by any space or any experience for this moment. And just imagine yourself at this mo at this time walking in the forest on a dirt path. You don't know where it goes. You're just trusting and you're following the path. And start to notice your surroundings the green leafy bushes, the tall, maybe redwood trees. Whether there's animals there or not. Whether the sun peeks through and onto the path or whether your path is just completely in the shade. And listen to the birds chirping and get a sense for the energy in this place. This is your path. You get to create it any way you want. And you notice as you continue to move forward on this path, you might take a little glance behind you and notice that Everything behind you has disappeared. There's only the path you stand on now and the one in front of you. Everything that you've come through, you've walked through to get to this point is gone. Just, it doesn't exist. And you keep moving forward on your path. And now you get to this area where it seems as if the path is going to split. And there's a signpost there. One side is towards ego and the other side is towards light. And it actually says Lumiere <laughs> on it. And the other one says fear, and it looks like an obvious choice. But feel into it. First, we're going to invite you to feel into, before you step onto either path, feel into where you've been choosing before. Maybe that path lights up for you. Maybe there's an arrow. We're just asking, just bringing in a little bit of awareness. For some of you, you may just be on the path of flight and that is okay. But just bring a little awareness, clarity, direction. And on your next breath, we invite you to make that choice on the path towards the light, except for one thing. The path of light is actually dark. And when you look at the ego path, it actually seems like you can see all the way down the path. I mean, it's like lit up with a little bit of sun and shade, but like you can see pretty far. But when you look to the Lemire side, the light side of the path, like you could see about three feet in front of you, but the rest is dark, which is ironic, isn't it? Path of light is a little unknown. You don't know where we're going to be going. There's no torches on the ground that you can see at the moment, 
But up ahead in that three feet, there is actually a large stick. So let's go grab that large stick. And let's just move in onto the path just a little further. And a little further down. You can use the stick to feel your way through the path. Notice how this path feels in the dark. Using your stick to navigate. Moving further down a path of unknownness. Like you don't know what's two feet in front of you. Tuning in, feeling into it. And you take a couple of steps further in and you realize when you turn around, you are in complete and total darkness. And you're probably saying to yourself, but I don't understand. This is the path of light. I don't get it. Keep using your stick. Move a couple of paces down that path just a little bit longer. And you're going to come across this kind of stand. You can feel it with your stick. You're knocking it. Feel around for it. And that is a torch. You can feel it. You drop your stick, you grab the torch, you can feel the whole thing. You can feel the paper or the fabric at the top. You know that you can light this. There doesn't seem to be any fire, however. So you call forth the element of fire to embrace you and to lend you its wisdom and with that, you intend and say out loud, fire. And the torch ignites with your intention, your imagination. And invite your power to activate the torch, to see the light, to see the flame. And hold it out. Do a 360 degree turn. How far down the road can you see? How far back can you see? What is on your path here? Where do you find yourself? And as you're looking around your surroundings, you can hear mumblings in the distance down onto your path. You know you're not alone on this path. You can hear the sounds of other people. And you, as an awakened and enlightened being who is walking the path of light, you decide to continue down the path with your torch. You can hear the whispers grow even stronger. You can see shadows to the left and to the right of you of the outline of people. People who've been waiting for you here in this space. Waiting for you to find the torch and ignite your light. To shine it on the path. And as you stand here in the middle of the pathway on the road with your light, imagine growing it brighter, making the flame on your torch larger. Hearing the whispers around you saying things like, what's that light? Where is it coming from? How are you doing that? 
How did you light the torch? And as you stand there, they start to draw closer. And you say, well, I will show you, I'll show you. It's here. But you don't ignite their torches for them. You hold yours steady in your hands and you tell them how you did it. You tell them the story of where you came from and how you made it down this path, how you found your light in the dark, how you called upon soul and the elements of fire to ignite your torch, to enlighten the path in front of you so that you could see everything and everyone here in this space. And you notice that the more you cling and hold it to you, the more you send the information, you see bits of light flicker on in the distance. One torch to the left, another to the right. And as you hold that open heart, that space, that energy, your light, you notice that everybody else's light ignites around you. Not because you're some greater, higher being, but because you didn't allow your experiences, your traumas to identify you. That you aligned with your light. You did the work. You done the healing, you're doing the healing. And you even explain to everybody around you, this is how I'm doing it. It's not perfect. I'm not perfect, but I can light the torch. I've been in this space, walking around without my light, identifying with my experiences and my beliefs with my mind which has been lying and telling me false stories my entire life. And I chose a different path. I've chosen a different way. And I know where to go from here. And if you'd like, we can walk this path together. Don't walk behind me though. I won't lead. I will fall and stumble at some point in time. I will fuck it up. But I'll get back up and I'll start again. So we walk together. We do this together. And when your light goes out, or if you stumble and fall, we'll all be here together to lift one another up. We will walk this path together as one as a huge ball of fiery light in unison, in unity as one. I know where the pitfalls are on this path because I've walked it before. This is what you're telling them. I will show you where they are so you can avoid them if you so choose. If you wish to experience them, that is entirely up to you as well. But I can show you how I've ignited this torch, how I've walked this path, how I've navigated it to the end and have come back, how I've navigated it to the middle and fucked it up and then started all over and got up again, lit my torch and moved forward. How every time my ego wants to, tr to bring me back, I cling to the light. How I never put down my torch. And you notice people are nodding their heads. They're like, yeah, yeah, I, I want to know. I want to go. 
We can walk together. I like it. I like it. And as you begin to step out onto the path, all of you, and all of these lights of flame ignite, you take a 360 degree turn around and it is a massive amount of people there. Before it might've been 20 lights around you, but as you turn, you see droves of people in every direction igniting their light and walking the path with you together. There is no pressure here to lead. The only thing you are sharing is your experience on this path to light, what you've done to get here, what you avoided, how you changed your frequency. You're just sharing your own experience. And they are welcome to take that or not, to choose their own path, to separate from you on this path. But you are holding that energy of, I have my torch and I'm walking this path. And if you want to walk with me together, we will walk. And if you don't, that is okay too. I kind of have the directions here. I know where I'm going but I'm not a great driver. I'm not a perfect driver. I've hit a couple of trees on this path, but we can do it together. And with this huge flame of light, we can see even more of what's on this path. And some people will stay and some people will go and there's no judgment in any of that. And just take a moment to really take in the idea of how many people can activate their light, their torches, and how bright the flame is, and how much more you can see on this path because you are all doing it together, embodying your lights together. but it has to start with someone holding the torch, taking the step onto the path, even though it's pitch black, even though you're only feeling it around with a stick until you get to that point where you're surrounded by darkness and then you find your own light first and you ignite that and then watch how it expands and grows and then allowing other people to ignite theirs. I'm just going to let you sit in this moment for a few seconds, just really allowing that to sink in. Just the idea of when I do my own work and I ignite my own light and I walk my own path, people can see that they see the torch. They're attracted like moths to a flame because they want the same things and you have information. You're not running around the path lighting everybody's torch because it's exhausting and inappropriate. Because what happens if that person's torch goes out they don't know how to reignite themselves. They have to learn how to do that themselves. Just like you had to learn how to walk down into the darkness to find your own light and ignite it from within. And just take a deep breath in. Activating all spiritual lessons, sending you the energetic information to you at the level of your soul cells to the degree that you so choose to receive it. Updating and repatterning. Same for your bodies and your teams to the degree that they so choose. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes 
and share your feedback. Your light is the attraction magnet. Any thoughts? Shanna says that was awesome. How do you feel? How many people feel lit up, if you will, for lack of a better word? How do you feel lit up? <laughs> I think, Shanna, you're the only one still left on the call. <laughs> I think you might have lost some people. Excellent. Excellent. So in any given moment, oh, Olivia's there. Thank you. That was awesome. I'm on fire. I'm lit. She's like, I'm lit. Awesome. Awesome. So in any given moment, you have that choice. You have that crossroads. And sometimes when you walk the path of light, it is dark because it is unknown. Shanna's like, I do feel lit up. <laughs> right? It's unknown. And it could be scary. And then in that darkness is where the mind comes in and says, there's spooky goblins here. Head back. There's dragons up ahead. Turn around. Don't light your light. You'll never know what you see here. Right? Now we can align with those stories or we can keep walking on the path, get our torch, ignite our light. And then we see we see the vast amount of people that are walking the path in the dark who haven't activated their life, their lights yet, right? And that is what attracts people to you. Not the processes, not the journals, not even the meditations, if you will. The meditations will help you change your energy, but people are looking for that magnetism, and that magnetism is you, it is your light, it is your soul, it is your inner being that lies within. <sighs> Take a deep breath, just embody that. There is some work around lack and understanding lack and understanding money and how we align with lack and how we can unravel lack mentalities, right? So for those of you who know me, you know that um, I came from a very lack-based mentality. I grew up in lack um, to the point where when I first started my practice, I couldn't sell anything like zero for like years, years and started to unravel these ancestral parental um, familial grids of lack uh, and beliefs that I was never going to be able to make any money. I was never going to be able to do this. Um, and just low, low self-esteem and um, not good enough energies, right? We can overcome these. But to understand lack mentality, to understand that when you spend a little bit more than you want to, that energy of nervousness, that energy of, oh my God, what did I do? That energy of resent or remorse after you've bought something for yourself. These are all frequencies of lack. These are all frequencies that play with your, your energy. These are all frequencies that dampen your light or blow out your torch. And to be able to understand the continuity of how lack plays into that dampening energy and how to monitor yourself. So, for example, when I was younger, like 13, we're talking like really young, when I was younger, you know, I would get like birthday money, but I would be like all the money I ever had in the world, right? And I think it was like, I don't know, $20, right? When I got that money, I was like, oh yeah, I'm so excited by anything that I want, right? And I would buy things like music cassette tapes, like an album, right? And I would get home and I'd play the album and the album would suck. And then I would be really upset because I'd spent, in my mind, all the money I had in the world on this thing 
that I hated and I would feel bad and it would dampen everything and I'd panic and I'd have anxiety and I'd try to return it to get my money back. I mean, all of these things, these are lack-based fears and they are woven into our energy fields and into our body central nervous system. And every time we go into that fear-based state of, oh my God, I've lost all my money in the world. Every time we do that, we dampen our light. We create more of that lack and more of those experiences. So that being said, that is why many, many weeks ago, we created a program called Magnetic Soul. And it was all about igniting your own light and being on that path of light and keeping that momentum going, but recognizing, recognizing what lack really is, how it relates to money, and how you may be experiencing it in your body without even realizing situations that you probably would not even know were lack that were dampening your light. Um, how to keep the momentum going, right? When you hit a hiccup, right? How do you how do you get up off the path when you've dropped your torch and the light went out? How do you pick that back up and light it again? These are the types of things that we cover in that program. 